I want you to tell us a little bit about the VRTL summit that is just being kicked off. Does this really show that we're at this tipping point in Hollywood where they are gathering to want to adopt immersive technology that much more? Well, I, I think that, that you know, um, everybody's really excited about this brand new medium. And I think it's, it's, we're still at the early stages of what it could become. But I think what we're finding out is that it, could, that, that it will be a, um, a really powerful storytelling tool indeed. And so at VRC, we're, we're really um, exploring how to, things like how to direct in VR and how to tell a story and how to develop characters, how to edit, those sorts of things. So I think um, you know it's a it's still in the exploratory stages, but um, but it's a really exciting future for I think the combination of cinema and sort of the gaming community and uh, Hollywood in general. I want to wind back a bit because of course you're two-time Academy Award winner. You worked on Avatar, Alice in Wonderland, um, Malficient as well. Where there did you really feel you were pushing the boundaries and starting to dabble within the AR, VR, immersive entertainment world? Yeah, I uh, you know I, I started this journey on uh, exploring VR uh, actually when I was working on Avatar. Um, what I could see, if, you know, because we we were creating these 360 degree worlds for the first time and actually making a movie in that world. In other words, Jim Cameron had a virtual camera and he could go into those those locations and actually create a film that way. And so mm -hmm. I just saw that it was uh, uh, simply a matter of time before we would you know take the the. Uh, the, the technology and develop it so that we could actually step into those worlds and that's what we see happening now. And we're just seeing branding of the virtual reality company, the production company that you've set up. Where are you finding demand already coming from, stemming from? Is it largely gaming at the moment? Or is Hollywood knocking on your door? You know, I think, it, uh, you know, originally I think everybody thought it was going to go strictly to the gaming community. but. What I wanted to see is if this was actually uh, something that could, could be a, a very powerful w way to tell a story in, in a new way. Um, so what we did is we did a, a cinematic test. We did a four minute test just to sort of put everything that Hollywood has to offer into this experiment. And that includes you know, uh, th theatrical music and Skywalker sound and all of those things that make us enjoy movies. And what we found when we made the, this, these combinations together was something um, not just cinematic, but it's actually even more powerful because the immersion into this world is so powerful that it's something that we haven't seen before. What are the challenges? What at the VRTL Summit have you been talking about that is currently holding things back? You know, I think for, for me, um, uh, what I love uh, about what we're doing right now is we're, we're exploring how to get real actors into these worlds. So. Uh, for instance, you know, we're, we're exploring not just the array camera capture techniques and, you know, dimensional video and those sorts of things. But um, what I want is the, the sort of holy grail for me is to get a, a, an emotional performance from a professional actor that we all recognize that in a, in a scene in VR that hasn't been done. I kind of I joke a little bit that we haven't seen Meryl Streep in VR yet. <laughs> and tell us about that, because we have seen some big actors and, and big successes, and we've often seen actors have to make believe in some of their roles, but how is the acting community taking on the VR challenge? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit different approach. I mean, right now they're starting to embrace that, and I think once we see, start to see more compelling content and really great storytellers and scripts being written for VR, that that will attract that kind of talent that we need. I also think that... Um, because we're at the early stages, we don't have the, the sort of capital to, we don't have $100 million at this point to make a film. So we, we have uh, you know, a smaller amount that we have to make the most with. Um, so I think once there's more investment into content, um, better uh, you know, uh, writers and, and storytellers coming into the scene, I think you'll start to attract uh, um, many top talent.